Welcome to the Reading at Home presentation. We hope this gives you a real insight into how we teach reading at St Peter's 2 to 8. As you can see, reading is part of the early years curriculum. It is one of the specific areas of learning as opposed to the prime areas of learning, which are personal, social, emotional development, physical development and communication and language. These prime areas create the foundation of every child's learning and essential life skills. The specific area of literacy is very much skill based and requires the direct teaching of phonics to ensure children have the skills they need to begin to read and write. So you might be thinking, what is phonics? Please click on the link below and that will give you a really simple video to show you the steps involved in learning what phonics is. The teaching of phonics is broken down into phases. It starts in phase one and progresses to phase six. In your child's preschool or nursery, they will have done a lot of work on phase one, which is children's awareness of sounds around them. In reception, we start to teach children actual letters and the sounds they make. And this begins in phase two. As you can see on the sound mat, phase two has a lot of single letter sounds. We teach the children the name of the letter, e.g. S, and the sound it makes, S. As children progress, they move on to two letter sounds, which we call diagraphs. You can see examples of these in the phase three sound mat, such as ch, sh, or ng. These help children to read a wider range of words. Blending and segmenting. Blending is the skill we use to read and segmenting is the skill we use to write in phonics. Once children have built up their sound knowledge, they will begin to blend sounds together in order to read words. Let's look at an example together. Let's look at the word sat. In sat, you can see there are three letter sounds or phonemes, s, a, we encourage the children to say these sounds in order, getting quicker and quicker until they can begin to hear the word emerge. Sat, sat, sat. For writing, we use the skill of segmenting. In this example, let's look at the word chop. You can see there are three buttons or circles underneath this word. That is because there are only three phonemes in this word. Ch, o, so we would ask the children to say the word chop and then break it up into the sounds they need to write ch -op. Throughout your child's phonic learning they will come across some words that we call tricky words. These are non-phonetic words which means we cannot blend them together or segment them. So this is quite confusing for your children because we're teaching the skill of reading for blending and segmenting. However, these are words that all we can say to them is that they are words that we just need to learn. We need to learn them by recognition of them. So they're tricky because we cannot blend them together. So for example, in phase two, you can see the tricky word go. If we were to try and blend this together, we would go g, o, go, which wouldn't make sense. So instead, we just need to say go. Now, for your children, we would recommend what would be really helpful is just to help them to practice to learn these words. There are a number of little games that you could play. You might want to play tricky word splat where you've got the words written on your wall and you could throw something at them or shoot them with a water pistol. Or you might just like to play tricky word hide and seek and get them to practice recognising and reading the words as much as you can. Now throughout phase two, phase three and phase four, phase five and phase six, your child will come across these tricky words. So we will make you aware of them throughout your child's reading journey. There are two main stages to teaching your child to read. On the one hand, we have the phonic and word recognition that we've been talking about, but equally important is to help your child's understanding of what they have read. And we do this all the time at school. We want the children to be able to reflect on what they've read and understand the context of the sentences also to have some understanding of character, setting and the feeling and moods of the book. 
We ask open-ended questions to help the children reflect on what they have read. And we always like to choose texts which help children connect to real life and experiences, help them develop new vocabulary and learn a love of reading. So you might be thinking, how do we teach phonics to your children at school? We do this every day in a daily phonic input. The session consists of reviewing all the sounds that we've learned previously, teaching the new sound, and we do that by using a jolly phonic song and action, which you can see on YouTube if you did want to look into them. We then have opportunities for your child to practice reading and writing the words using the sound. And we also give them opportunities to read simple sentences and write simple sentences that have that sound in them. The sessions are very interactive. There's lots of videos there, there's games, they're multi-sensory, and there's a couple of examples on the slides here that you can see if you did like to have a look at them. After the phonics session, your children have many opportunities to continue their phonic learning of that sound into the areas of provision throughout the day in school. What can you do at home to help? Well, first and foremost, promote a love of books. As important and helpful as it is for you to listen to your child read at home, it's equally important that they get to enjoy a story with you at bedtime. Why not let them pretend to read, use cookbooks, buy the magazines, look at the pictures in books together and think about what might be happening in the story. Show them reading in a real life context. They'll love to see you read and you modelling the skills that they need to use in their reading. Make reading a special time. Choosing the right time to read is really important. Make it a comfortable and quiet space and special time for you. Use funny voices or toys or actions. Take time to discuss the story. Perhaps read a page each. Play games, talk about the pictures. You need to stay positive with lots of praise. Sometimes listening to a child read can be quite a long process as they sound out all the words that they need to read. So break it up with plenty of talk about the pictures and taking turns reading together. Don't push it if your child's too tired. Five to 10 minutes is absolutely fine. And if the enjoyment isn't there, stop and just have a go on another day or another time. Now, reading just doesn't occur within stories and books. Reading is in the environment everywhere you go. And there's many of the learning opportunities to have for your child's reading development. A couple of images are on this slide here, and you can see that there are many different ways to incorporate the learning of phonics into really practical play-based games. There's advertisements on shop windows that have sounds for them to practice reading and blending together. There's many games that you can play, signs on the road, signs when you're driving down the roads, writing little CVC, little tricky words on bananas or the fruits that they're eating. There's lots of interactive games that you can play online. So reading is everywhere. At St Peter's 2 to 8, we have a rich and varied reading scheme from various different publishers, different schemes, and there are examples of fiction and non-fiction, which are roughly organised into colour bands. Please don't focus on the colour bands though. We will pick books which we know are just right for your child with the right level of challenge, but also that allow them to practise the skills and the sounds that they're working on at that time in school. A lot of your children will start off with a wordless story. These are great because they allow the children to tell the story by looking at the pictures and drawing on their own understanding of stories, story language and their comprehension. These are great to share together and we love seeing the stories that the children come up with. As your child progresses through school, you will see them having a range of different books. These will obviously be matched to the phonic learning that they're doing at that time. The length of the book will change, as will the tricky words and the difficulty. We will make sure that these books are perfect for your child and where they're at in their learning. If you want to speak to us about the books that your child's learning or you want to have any questions about this, please just get in touch. As well as taking home a reading book every day, the children will have a reading record book. This has notes and advice inside the cover to help with reading, but you'll also find that inside the reading books, there are often questions and activities you can do which support the reading of the book. These are really helpful. You will see in your reading record book that there is also a label. 
This will inform you of the sounds we are learning in phonics, our key objective for our maths learning, and also a question of the week, which we hope promotes talk between you and your child and a chance for them to use their thinking skills. What we would like you to do with the reading record book is just to comment, or actually you can just tick if the book was completed reading at home. If not, just tell us where you've got up to in the book so we know whether to give you a new book or to keep that one in the book bag until you've finished. If you could please bring back a reading book and the reading record book every day, that makes sure that we can hear children read with us in school and comment on their reading with us so you can see how they've been getting on with us at school. Unfortunately, because of the situation with COVID, we're not currently using our library in the same way that we did before, and we won't be sending library books back at the moment. However, we are hopeful that in the future we'll be able to get back to normal, and therefore this is what you can expect once library books are sent home. We want to say thank you so much for listening to this presentation. We do hope you found it useful and interesting. Please ask us if you have any questions at all. We're always happy to help. And most of all, we hope you enjoy reading at home with your child. And thank you very much. Bye bye.